Power Dali is a simple local web UI which you can use to generate text-to-image images. It's a bit like ChatGPT Dali, but it has several features which are not available in ChatGPT, but only through the API or through this UI. For instance, you have a style selector. You can choose vivid style. This is the default, which is also used in ChatGPT. And you have natural style, which is unavailable in ChatGPT, as far as I know. So let's say um, a happy cat jumping over a fence outside nature, sunny. And we hit play. And another thing you can do here is hit play or generate several times and you can see they will generate simultaneously. So this will be faster uh, than ChatGPT. And here we have the cat. And you can see vivid style standard quality, vivid style, and we generated one in natural style. It's a bit easier to see in photos. So let me try again. Let's let's make three. Uh, let's see again what natural style looks like in a photo. Instead of hitting generate several times, you can also select, for instance, six images right here. So this is a better example of natural style. It looks a bit more raw and sometimes stranger, sometimes um, slightly more realistic, actually. Um, another thing you can see here is your prompt versus the auto revised prompt. So what is a revised prompt? Well, it turns out that uh, ChatGPT, as well as the API, always rewrite your prompt. They say it's uh, used to embellish the prompt, which they say is more useful to generate the image you want. But they also say it's used for safety reasons. So I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, um, but I guess, for example, they would take out a celebrity name and replace it with something merely describing the celebrity so that it's kind of um, according to their guidelines. So we said photo of a happy cat jumping over a fence, etc. And they revised it to an image representing a joyful feline in mid-leap, etc, etc. And this revision of the prompt is different for every time you uh, you click generate. And that's just how the API works and that's just how ChatGPT works. But you can now take this, you can copy it by clicking here, you can paste it here again, and then you can say exact prompt. And this sometimes works. It's kind of um, a workaround where I now tell the API, please take this exact prompt, but I just tell it to the API in fuzzy words and there's no explicit setting in the API. So what happens? I tell the API, please use this exact prompt, do not change it. And then I repeat what I need. And we can see it actually, actually helped. It sometimes respects my command to not change the prompt. So that's another thing that's useful. Um, you can also just select the aspect ratio, the resolution, which is square, horizontal, vertical. These are all the three resolutions currently available in Dolly 3. Um, if you use ChatGPT, you have to tell it something like, please make it vertical format or please make it a horizontal format. But this is just uh, easier and more reliable. So if I say vertical and hit generate, it's now guaranteed to create vertical. Something it's not guaranteed to do is to also not rotate the image. Sometimes it unfortunately rotates it into a landscape. We can see if that happens here or not. Um, okay, so it actually did a not only vertical aspect ratio, it also did a kind of portrait um, format. So it's not a rotated image. But let me try to find a rotated image for you somewhere. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
Um, oh yeah. So okay, this was actually appearing like this originally, but then I have this nice rotate button here, also not available in ChatGPT, which then rotates the preview and you can click on any image to get into the full resolution. So that's kind of useful to to see if the image is to your liking. It will not actually save the rotation. You can do that later in Photoshop. Um, thought it would be possible to add actually. But yeah, the rotate button is kind of useful here. And yeah, you click on any image to get the full resolution, which is also quicker than I experienced the ChatGPT UI to be. And this is very useful for me if you have a lot of generations every day, you quickly want to understand if it's something you can use to continue in Photoshop. Now, another thing you can do here is switch between standard quality and HD quality. So let's say we say studio photography of a person holding a torch, smiling. Oh, let's make it a robot. It's a robot. So now I create one in standard quality, or two actually, and two in HD. You can see it's very easy to do A-B testing or to launch it simultaneously. So I'm now waiting for four images, but it takes um, only a quarter of the time that this would take in ChatGPT because in ChatGPT you have to do it sequentially. So now I'm waiting and I get the first image, standard quality, so that's the normal one, and this is HD quality. This is more costly, I will talk about the costs later, but OpenAI also says it has more details and a more refined look across the image. You can try it out to see if that is useful for you. I find the standard quality actually really great, mostly, but who knows, maybe HD is kind of like pushing it even further. Maybe you can uh, tell the difference. The resolution is the same actually, just to, just to let you know. So, we got Oh, this one looks really cool. We got four, got four little robots. Sometimes ChatGPT will not allow your prompt. Let me show you what happens here in this interface. Um, studio photo of a woman in bikini. I don't know if that will work. Apologies for the not safe for work uh, prompt here. Um, yeah. So it says, oops, OpenAI says your request was rejected as a result of our safety system. And here I'm clarifying that it may be your prompt which triggered this, or it may be the way that OpenAI rewrote it which triggered this. So um, you don't actually have a chance to know which, which was the exact prompt that triggered it. Okay, so we got blocked three times here. It's kind of like accidental or, or random, sometimes the same prompt that you have here works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, that's the way it is. Yeah, so we have the exact prompt, we have the style selector, we have the aspect ratio, we have the quality, and you can choose up to six images. It would be easy here to include more in the interface. Let me know if you need that. And now to talk about the pricing. So this is open source and it's f uh, given to you free by me, so I don't get anything. But OpenAI wants to get paid. And we can see that I actually had to pay this just yesterday because I used it a lot, a lot, a lot for testing when I programmed this. And I had my highlight of payment somewhere in the middle of the year where I use the API a lot. These are not the costs by PowerDALI. This is just an example how the, how the API can incur costs. And to find out the exact pricing, click on the pricing, scroll down to the generated images somewhere here. Where is it? Audio models, image models, and look for DALI 3. This is PowerDALI, uh, uh, uses DALI 3. And you can see the resolution here. And you can see the pricing here per image. And it grows a bit in pricing when you use um, vertical and horizontal. Oh, sorry, this would be horizontal and this would be vertical. And it grows even more. It's even costlier if you use the HD option. So you pay $0.08 cents per
per um, square HD and you pay this amount for the other aspect ratios. You get more pixels from those. They kind of go beyond the square. So kind of makes sense. I hope the pricing goes down. I can't do anything about it. This is just OpenAI. When you launch or when you install PowerDali the first time, you're asked to save your OpenAI key locally. The installation guide will explain how you can do all that. Just go to github.com, jphilip, PowerDali, and follow the installation notes. You first start by installing Node.js if you haven't already. Then you grab the project. Then you enter your OpenAI key into a local file. Obviously, I will never see this. It's uh, just your local installation connecting to OpenAI. No external server, no server by me included. Um, yeah, then you go to the command line and you launch node server.js. And then you go to localhost colon 3000, which is your local server. And then you can just um, use this. And since it's open source, if you want to, um, you can have a go and check out the scripts and change anything you want. It's really quite easy in the way it's put together. And you can ask ChatGPT to help you um, add features or just ask me if you want a feature. The main ones you probably want to edit were uh, our script.js, which is the client side, and server.js, which is the server side. Again, it's all open source. You can just add any feature into it as you wish. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoy this program. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.